Good morning once again, dear brothers and sisters. Thank you so much for joining us this week. And it is always a pleasure for me, Tabang, to be leading you in a time of worship. We thank God that in the midst of all that is happening, we have the opportunity to gather together and reflect and listen to what the Word says. We thank God also for the gift of life. I'm now going to open the service by lighting the candle to signify that in the midst of all darkness we find ourselves in, or we might find ourselves in, God is light. Jesus Christ came to be the light, and he called us to be the light. So we light this candle, dear friends as a reminder in our lives that when we have Christ in our lives, there will always be light in our lives. Amen. And so now that we have lit the candle and we are going to leave it uh, like this for the rest of the service, we are now going to open the service in prayer. Join me as we pray together. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. We, we come to you knowing that you are our God and there is none like you. We come before you knowing that you are the creator of everything. You are the creator of heaven and earth. Everything is in place because of your creation. We declare, Heavenly Father, and we know, we affirm with our mouth that there is no other God than you and there shall never ever be. And so thank you, Lord God, for having such a wonderful Father like you. A Father who becomes light in darkness, a Father who provides when we need to be provided for. And for that we say thank you. We also come before you, Heavenly Father, confessing our sins, the sins that we commit as a result of our weaknesses. We come to you, Heavenly Father, saying, please, Lord God, forgive us. For the, forgive us for the sins that we commit in word, in thoughts, and in deed. Forgive us for the sins that we commit against each other. And forgive us against the sins that we commit against you, Lord. We come before you also, Lord God, thanking you for everything that we have. Greatly we give you thanks for the gift of life in the midst of pandemics. We live in a time, Heavenly Father, where we wake up to the news of passings of our loved ones. We have so much been accustomed to finding rest in peace. But we are grateful that we are still alive, Lord God. We are grateful for your provisions, Lord. You continue to provide meals. You continue to provide safe space. And every small and big thing that you keep on giving us, we are grateful, Lord God. We are not only praying for ourselves, Lord God, but we are praying for other people, Lord. We remember those that are grieving for their loved ones. We say unto you, please, Lord God, grant them peace and comfort in this difficult time. Journey with them and be next to them, Lord God. We pray for those that have lost their jobs as a result of COVID-19 and the lockdown regulations. We call unto you, Lord God, to say, look at them favorably and graciously. Open doors, Lord God. Give them what they are asking you to do. We pray for those that are in hospital. We pray for those that are that are in quarantine, we pray for those that are fighting this disease of coronavirus and any other illnesses. Be their God, be their doctor. We also pray, Lord God, for the health professionals who cannot even take leave to just go and rejuvenate. We pray for them, Lord God, and we pray, Lord God, for everyone who needs you. We pray that you are there. May your Holy Spirit go down to them and assure them of your presence. And as we begin this service, Lord God, we pray for your Holy Spirit to move, to move and touch us, to move and work something in us. 
May your word, Lord God, be felt strongly in our hearts and may your word change us. May your word call us, Lord, to follow you. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Here I am down on my knees again, surrendering all, surrendering all, and find me here, Lord, as you draw.
And now, friends, we find ourselves reading God's Word, and we read our reading for this morning from the Gospel according to St. John. We are going to read from chapter 1, from verse 35 to verse 51. The Gospel according to John, chapter 1, verse 35 to verse 51. And it reads as follows. The next day, John was there again with two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus passing by, he said, The Lamb of God. When when the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. Turning around, Jesus saw them following him and asked, What do you want? They said, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? Come, he said, and you will see. So they went and saw where he was staying and spent the day with him. It was about the tenth hour. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard what John had said and who had followed Jesus. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother And tell him, we have found the Messiah, that is the Christ. Then he brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, the son of John. You will be called Cephas, which means, which is translated to Peter. The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathanael and told him, We have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth, can anything good come from there? Nathanael asked, Come and see Philip said Philip. When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said of him, Here is a true Israelite in whom there is nothing false. How do you know me? Nathanael asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus said, you believe because I have told you, I saw you under the fig tree. You shall see greater things than that. He then added, I tell you the truth. You shall see heaven open and angels of God ascend and descend, descending on the Son of Man. This, dear brothers and sisters, is the word of God and thanks be to God. Allow me, friends, this morning to talk to you about the call of discipleship, or rather the call to discipleship. We have read from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, and Jesus Christ has not yet begun his public ministry. We have read again, friends, from the first chapter where John begins by affirming that in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God Himself. He was with God through everything in the beginning, and through Him everything was made, and without Him nothing was made. In him, John says, was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but, in, but the darkness did not understand. And that is the beginning of our gospel, the gospel of John. Now, allow me then, friends, to ask ourselves a simple question. As young people, in most cases, we wonder... Why should we come to church? Because chances are, 
Most of us come to church every Sunday because our friends call us or invite us to church. But mainly, many of us come to church on Sundays because our parents force us to wake up and come to church. And I can remember when I was still young and when I was still a teenager, there were moments where I did not want to go to church. But my mom would not have it. When she woke up, she made sure that she wakes everyone up and she made sure that she doesn't leave us in the house when she went to church. And for me, there, there's always been this great question. Why should I go to church? And I even asked my mom, why are you always forcing me or us to go to church? But because I knew that I had to be a good child, I woke up, I went to church. There were times where church was very interesting because my friends were there. And there were times where I just scratched my head and wondered, what am I doing here? The problem was not with the church service. The problem was not with the preacher. The problem was not with the sermon. But the problem was me understanding why should I be at church. And the question still remains to us or to many young people, especially teenagers and some old people. Why should I go to church? Others would even say, because I can pray at home. I can connect with other people outside of a church space. We read from the Gospel of John. And John, again, talks about Jesus calling his first disciples. We know that Jesus had, has, had 12 disciples. And many other people can even tell you the names of these disciples. But due to time, allow me then to come to this question. What is discipleship? Now, from the Gospel of John, we read that Jesus Christ calls his disciples. It is not the disciples that are calling Christ, but it is Christ who are calling, but it is Christ who is calling his first disciples. Then allow me then, friends, to say to you, Jesus Christ has been declared the Lamb of God. Now, the Bible says, when Jesus was with, his two, was with two of his disciples, when, he, when they saw, now the Bible says, when the next day, when John was with two of his disciples, so John, the, John had disciples. Not John the Baptist, John the Apostle had disciples. And when they saw Christ, John said, look, the Lamb of God. And at that moment, the two disciples followed Christ. And Jesus asked them, what do you want? And they called him rabbi, which means teacher. And they asked, where are you staying? They want to follow him. Now he says to them, come and you will see. He doesn't tell them, he doesn't give them the address. He doesn't give them the GPS. He doesn't send them the WhatsApp location. But he says to them, come and see. And what do they do? They go and follow Christ. And they spend time with him. And again, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, heard about this. And they followed Christ. The first thing that Andrew did was to find his brother. Now, friends, as Christ calls his disciples, every now and then, those that have been called by Christ again go and call others. And that is the beautiful thing I love about this passage. That those that have had encounters with Christ go again to call other people. It is more of you have received life. Then you go and run and call other people to receive the very same life that you received. 
It is like receiving light because you have received the light of the world. You go to others and you say, come and see the light that I have received. Now, Andrew goes to find his brother, and he told him, we have found the Messiah. That is Christ. Now, friends, allow me to say that Andrew does not go and say we have found Christ because Andrew found Christ first. But Andrew is able to say we have found Christ because it is Christ who found Andrew first. We are able to say to other people, come and see the one who saved me. Not because we found him first, but he found us first. And that is the beauty about the teaching of us as Methodist people. We believe that it is God who is constantly at work finding us. And it is Christ who found the disciples. Have you found Christ? Is the question that I want to ask. Because the disciples, as Christ finds them, they go and find other disciples so that they're able to follow Christ. Then he brought Simon to Jesus. Now this is Andrew. Andrew then brought Simon to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, you are Simon, the son of Jonah. And you will be called Peter. You will be called Cephas. You will be called the rock. And the next day again, as they leave, for, for Galilee. Christ found Philip and he said to him, follow me. Now, the call to discipleship, brothers and sisters, is a call to follow Christ. Disciples are followers. Disciples are learners. Why do we need to be disciples? We need to be disciples of God to follow him and to learn from him. But again, we cannot be disciples if we don't believe in the master. These gentlemen, the disciples, are called the disciples because they believed in the one calling them. And after believing in him, they left everything to follow him. That is what the call of discipleship is about. It's about believing in Christ the master. It is about leaving everything and living, following Christ. That is the call to discipleship. It is about the relationship with Christ. It is about living your life the way Christ would say or live his life. It's about saying things that Christ would want you to say. It's about being a peacemaker when there is conflict. It's about being the light in darkness. It's about being life when there is death. It's about bringing people to the kingdom and not to ourselves. And Christ is the one who has been finding. Again, when they found Nathaniel, listen to what they say. Remember Andrew said, rem remember Andrew said to his brother, we have found the Messiah. Again, these words come back. They say, we have found the one that Moses was talking about. So Christ is not a stranger to the story. Christ has been part of the story in the Old Testament. Many people think Christ's story or part in the story begins in the New Testament. But Christ has been part of the story in the New Testament, from the Old Testament. And now they say the one that the scriptures have been talking about, the one that Moses spoke about, the one that prophets have, have been talking about, is now here. Come and see. We have found him. And again, it is he who found them. And they say he's from Nazareth. Oh my, oh my. Now listen to what Nathaniel says. Nathaniel says, Nazareth, can anything good come out of them? You see, Nazareth was a place of nobodies and nothing. So according to human standards, Nothing good can ever come out of them. But allow me to say to you, God works in mysterious ways. I don't know where you come from. Now, our background should not dictate our future because God can do anything with anyone from anywhere. God raises Jesus from Nazareth. And again, as we are about to close, dear brothers and sisters, the call to discipleship is a call to follow Christ.
When we follow Christ, we say the words of the Methodist people. We say the words of the Methodist people. I am no longer my own. I am yours. If you want to send me anywhere, I will go. That is the call to discipleship. We first believe in the Messiah, in the Master, in the Teacher, and we become learners. And again, the Teacher then sends us out to go and be disciples everywhere. Our lives are showing that we are God's people. The other thing, now one could say, but we are under lockdown. How best can we be disciples of God where we are? Now, we've got friends who need Christ. We've got family members who need Christ in this time. Now, when we become disciples of Christ, we stand in the gap. Even in these tough times when people are going through the most, we become hope. Because that's what God calls us to do as his disciples, to offer hope in hopeless situations. Now the call to discipleship, ask us to leave ourselves and to follow Christ. And when we follow Christ, people will know that we are of God based on what we say, based on what we, how we live our lives. We cannot claim to be God's disciples and spread hatred. We cannot claim to be God's disciples, Christ's disciples and talk negative about other people. We cannot claim to be God or Christ's disciples and continue to hate other people. No, that's not what we are called to do. Now lastly, have you found Christ? Or has Christ found you? Can you boldly say, I am a disciple and a follower of Christ? Have you chosen Christ as your Lord and Savior? Now, if you have not, I'm giving you an opportunity now through the power of the Holy Spirit to use this moment to give your life to Christ and be a follower of Christ. Because when Christ found the disciples they were able to go and tell other people to say, come and see, we have found the Christ, the Messiah. We have found the ones that, have been, that we've been told about. Now, when you receive Christ, you are able to say to your friends, come and see the one who, is, who has changed my life. Come and see the one who gives me strength in tough times. Come and see the one who, who motivates me. Come and see the one who gives me life. Come and see the one who is light of my life. Come and see the one that, have, that my parents have been worshipping. Come and see the one that my ancestors were worshipping. Come and see the one who is my Lord and my Savior. Come and see the one who is the leader of my life. And this is the moment, my brother and my sister, that if you want to receive a Christ and make him your Lord, this is the perfect opportunity. Because it is when we receive Christ that we are able to go and tell others about him. And I pray that as we are about to pray now, my biggest prayer is that you find yourself time and moments of reflection. Reflect if Christ is still at the center of your life. If you are a follower of Christ, reflect on is Christ, have you used an opportunity to go and call others to Christ? If you have not done it, it's never too late. We can still do it together. Have you received the one that the scriptures have been talking about? If not, this is the moment. Come, let us pray together. Holy Spirit, we come before the heavenly throne. Some of us have received Christ many years back. But because of the challenges of our lives, we have stepped back and backslidden. Some of us have not yet received Christ because there are questions that we have and there's never been moments of finding answers. Some of us don't know whether to come or not to come. 
Some of us have heard but have not yet received convictions in our heart. Holy Spirit, I pray that right now in this service, I pray that right now in this moment, you stir something great in our hearts, something that's going to lead us to be great followers of Christ. Holy Spirit, I pray that we use this space right now to receive Christ as our Lord and personal Savior. I pray that we renew our discipleship journey and call for those that have already done so. I pray, Heavenly Father, that as people look at us in these times of pandemics, that they see something and they want to be like us. And when they ask us, how do you manage to be where you are, we answer them. It is because, it is because ours is a living God. It is because ours is a Christ who is alive. We receive the Holy Spirit's power right now in this place in Jesus' name. Be the Lord of our lives. Wherever you go, wherever you lead, we shall come follow. Even if it's tough, as long as you are the leader of the journey, we don't mind to come and follow you. Take over our lives, Lord. Make us your instruments and vessels. Take over our lives, dear Lord God, and do what you will with it. As long as you are in charge, we don't mind. We pray all of this, Lord God, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Give us strength, Lord God, to be young disciples. Give us space to go, even at places where we are not going to be accepted. Make us your disciples, Lord. Make us the instruments of your peace. Make us, Lord God, your mouthpiece, so that we speak whatever you want to communicate with your people. Take over our lives, Lord. We lay our lives down before you, for you are God of our lives. And we pray all of this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen, friends. And I pray that we renew our call to discipleship. May God, who is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you, bless you, and guide you. Amen. And now, let us end this service with the words of the benediction. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and evermore. Amen.